Corner, we're going to be talking about knowledge mobilization as careers inside, outside, and around side the university. The orientation to knowledge mobilization is turning research into action. And this is an example of some work at, at York University. Deb Pepler is in the Department of Psychology and she works on uh, bullying and on healthy relationships. And she leads, with Queens, leads PrevNet, which is promoting relationships and eliminating violence. It's an NCE, Network of Centers of Excellence New Initiative. And what, what the new initiative is, is a collection, um, uh, it's a network of 34 NGOs, national level NGOs, and postdocs and graduate students and academics all working together to look at healthy relationships in, in um, uh, mostly in schools and in primary schools. So what Deb is doing on top of having supervised graduate students and on top of supervising postdocs, she is actually sits on the Safe School Actions Team for Ontario. She sat on some multinational level bodies on the UN to look at healthy relationships, bullying and violence. She's doing knowledge mobilization. We've all got Deb Peplers in our universities. We've all got um, faculty members and graduate students who work with non-academic partners. But what York University is doing is we've identified um, knowledge mobilization as a strategic priority and under the Vice President Research we're investing in staff to support knowledge mobilization at the university. And, uh, but this isn't a new idea either. Martha Piper, who was the president of UBC, said in her Killam lecture in 2002 that we must translate our research findings in the human sciences into public policy and social programs and that this is important is as important as technology transfer in the engineering and natural sciences. So if all of our universities invest in tech transfer and this activity is as important as that, why don't our universities invest in support services for knowledge mobilization? So I'm going to talk to you about what York has been doing and then what we're doing with our partners across the country. My name's David, and I'm a mobilizer. My name is Jackie, and I'm a mobilizer. My name is Andre, and I'm a mobilizer. My name is Isolde, and I'm a mobilizer. My name is Krista, and I'm a mobilizer. My name is Steve, and I'm a mobilizer. I'm Michaela, and I'm a mobilizer. My name is Daniele, and I am a mobilizer. Knowledge mobilization has its origins in technology transfer, which is the unilateral push of technologies into the hands of industry. Knowledge mobilization extends that to be a bi-directional or iterative relationship between researchers and graduate students or research users so that research can inform public policy and professional practice. Knowledge mobilization has elements of producer push, user pull, knowledge exchange, but it extends those to include the co-production of knowledge. York University has extended its work in knowledge mobilization locally to be leading research impact, which is Canada's national knowledge mobilization network. In my opinion, research should be available uh, for all people uh, to understand. So it's wonderful to have somebody translate it so that the public can understand what it is all about. There's no use when only scholars talk about their research. For United Way of York Region, KM really has been a catalyst, a convener, and a think pad for the work we do and the broader community. York Region is a huge amalgam of nine municipalities, a mix of urban, rural, and suburban. And within that, you've got a range of social issues, a range of community partners, all with different skills and levels of capacity and different opportunities to come together. What KM has done is provided the table for all the partners to sit and communicate and share information and knowledge. It's also been a catalyst in our thinking on how we can solve community priorities differently today than we may have in the past. We provide a lot of service and we, there's a lot of new research about children and family services. As an organization, it's very hard for us to put that research on the ground without help. The KM unit at York is particularly helpful in us translating research and providing it to our workers and delivering service with the research that is providing for good service. Knowledge mobilization has become very important in Canada. My area of research is homelessness and one of our key beliefs is that we have to figure out ways to mobilize homelessness research so that it has a bigger impact 
on policy and practice. York University's Knowledge Mobilization Unit has been a big support in this effort. Having a partner like KM for United Way of York Region has been priceless. So why say something when your partners can say it for you? What I uh, mentioned when I was talking about it was it's a combination of producer push, user pull, knowledge exchange, and co-production. So knowledge mobilization isn't one thing. Knowledge mobilization is a suite of services that we provide to faculty, to graduate students, and to community partners to get them talking to each other. So we don't actually mobilize any knowledge in the knowledge mobilization unit. We create relationships. And through those relationships, and the knowledge can flow in a two-way fashion. So the Inclusivity Action Plan, um, Human Services Planning Coalition in York Region. Human Services Planning Coalition was, and it's now been rebranded into the Human Services Planning Board, a coalition of 16 human service sectors. So it was, um, it was police and safety, it was health, it was youth and um, culture and faith groups and immigration services, employment. All these groups, these sectors got together and met. And so it was a perfect venue for us to be able to make connections between the community and the university. In um, the Inclusivity Action Plan recognized that the top location for immigrant settlement um, was York Region. 43% of the population in York Region are new Canadians and it's the fastest growing new Canadian population in Canada. And it was recognized that it was important to um, integrate these ethnocultural communities into the social fabric of York Region and that York Region would benefit from that. So in response to this recognition, they developed the, uh, there was an inclusivity action summit, um, inclusivity summit in January of 2005. In May of 2005, the Human Services Planning Coalition adopted and launched the inclusivity action plan. And, uh, and in November, they called us and they, they said, we need to evaluate this. We're looking for help in evaluating the IAP. Can you help us? So we identified Mina Singh, who's from the School of Nursing, and Michaela Hinia from the um, Department of Psychology, who are both experts in community-based program evaluation. And the Human Services Planning Coalition gave us a little bit of money. We put a little bit more money in so that we could get some policy briefs and best practice models out of that. And in February 2008, the report went to the Human Services, the IAP Steering Committee, and then to York Region Council, which made a decision not to continue with this incarnation of the Inclusivity Action Plan. But that was a political decision. What they've come round to after that was that they've now accepted money from the Citizenship and Immigration Canada, about $19 million, to build five welcome centers. So we evaluated the one welcome center that existed in York Region, provided evidence to council for political reasons they didn't move forward with that incarnation of the Inclusivity Action Plan, but took the evidence that had been generated by our faculty and made the decision to invest in five more welcome centers. And the nice thing about this is, is that Michaela and Mina got a journal, an article in an international journal out of this. So the needs of the scholars are met through publishing. The needs of the community are met by because they were able to make evidence-informed decisions that they weren't able to base that on any evidence they'd had previously. And this is an example of a user poll because the user, the community, phoned us and I said, can you help? Mm -hmm.